Hi, everyone. Okay, let me set the scene for you. Baby is born, has heart defect, has open heart surgery, and needs a very special formula to basically live. But because the baby consumes the formula by bottle and not by a tube in the nose or the stomach, the insurance company pretty much gives a blanket denial to the family. A doctor in Southern California says, you're not going to do that. That's not okay. And starts reaching out to the insurance company, but gets the same runaround that we all do and then takes to Twitter. I then heard about the tweet after it went viral. I heard from some of you who alerted me to it. I reached out to Anthem, then got in touch with the baby's family. And here's the resolution to that story and an interview with the doctor who got it all started. So this is a family I've been taking care of uh, for over 10 years with their previous two children. They got pregnant. They actually had a complicated pregnancy. Mother was on bed rest for, I think, a few months, actually. And the baby ended up coming early. And as somewhat of a surprise, after the baby came early, he was found to have a pretty serious heart uh, defect, which needed to be repaired urgently. So he had heart surgery, open heart surgery, when he was, I think, two or three days old, which was pretty complicated. And then he was in the ICU for about a month after that, recovering from his heart surgery. Part of a complication of a heart surgery in a little baby, which is very common, is that there's a tube in your chest, which helps basically supply your body with fats that you eat. And that, that tube often gets damaged during the surgery. It's not super uncommon for that to happen in a baby. And because of that, anytime a baby like that eats normal breast milk, normal formula, the fats from that will leak out into the baby's chest and cause them to have difficulty breathing. And it was one of the reasons the baby had a longer uh, stay in the ICU because every time they fed him, he started having breathing issues. They finally figured this out. They put him on this very specialty formula, which in 16 years of practice, he's the first kid I've had on this formula. So I was even unaware of it. Um, and it's made with a different blend of fats that is safe uh, for this uh, type of child to, uh, to eat. The problem is there's no other alternative. So if the baby doesn't eat this formula, there's really nothing else he can have. So it's like critical that he, he get fed this one. This was definitely a life-sustaining uh, formula. He needed it. Uh, this formula runs somewhere between, I think around 50 to $80 per little can. And for those of us who have had children, we know kids can run through a few of those cans a week. So if you do the math, this is like thousands and thousands of dollars. So it's about two to three times the cost of normal, normal formula that a child will have. And how long is he going to need it? It could be just for a month or two. It could be for his first year of life. We're not really sure. It'll be trial and error, but it is the only thing you can have right now. So Baby West's family goes out looking for it. And number one, they couldn't find it. But number two, what they found when they went through the insurance company is we won't cover it. Sort of a one size fits all really blanket denial. And that's what you found, right? Right. They had these specific categories of kids who they would cover these formulas for. So if he was unable to suck through a bottle and had a tube in his stomach or down his nose, then they would cover the formula. But because he had the capacity to drink from a bottle, they wouldn't cover it. And this seemed a little strange to me that they would cover it uh, in one condition, but not the other condition, considering it was exactly the same formula for exactly the same condition. So you start making calls to the insurance company, which is Anthem Blue Cross of California. Correct. We so. made calls uh, every day, many calls between patients after hours at lunchtime before work. I'm a physician and I know the lingo. And, and even for me, I had a really hard time getting someone. So most of my frustration with this was just not being able to talk to anyone. And then when I finally got through to someone, invariably they couldn't help us or they were in the wrong department or they just gave us a blanket no with no exceptions. Was it your understanding that if Anthem Blue Cross could only hear from the doctor, then they might reconsider and then the family might get approval? Yes, I think if they heard the specific circumstances of this sick child, they would probably approve it. And Again. I figured if I was able to talk to a physician or someone who knew the specifics of his case, that they would pay for the formula and allow this child to be fed and for the, the family to not have the stress of having to buy this very expensive formula. So you turn to Twitter. Why Twitter? <laughs> I mean, honestly, I just got really frustrated. You started getting thousands of retweets. I was on a plane. I landed on the West Coast in California and people were saying, hey, David, have you seen this? Hey, David, have you seen this? I reach out to Anthem. I got in touch with you, actually your wife first, then you. Then I finally got in touch with Baby West's family. What was the resolution? So it was incredibly helpful. So I woke up the next morning after I sent out this tweet. 
Um, and I had people calling me from, from amps. It was really helpful that I was able actually to talk to a single person who can kind of walk me through the process, who can listen to the story of this baby and eventually, uh, approve the, the formula for the baby. So baby West dead, who did not want to appear on camera, nor did mom, <laughs> uh, told me over the phone that he ended up speaking with an Anthem executive and that executive not only found the company, which had the formula, which was the first big hurdle to cross to begin with. Like we just got to find the formula, which by the way, turned out to be just down the road in Tustin, California, not very far from where they live. And then the executive put his own personal credit card on the line and said, I will cover it for however long it needs to be covered. And I get the chills as I say that. Look, I'm not trying to do a commercial for Anthem. I'm not trying to make the man look good. And I don't even know the man's name to give him the credit. But I thought, Doc, that was an incredible gesture of human kindness. It was an awesome resolution to that. I'm eternally grateful uh, to that person who works at Anthem and, and I know the family is as well. Now, listen, I know there's some people watching who are going to be like, David, not everybody can get an executive or a Dr. Ball to be burning down the doors for them. What's the takeaway and the mission going forward? There will be other baby Wests. How do they get the help when they need this? Yeah, I think I, two things to say about that. So, so first is from a system wise approach, I think there have to be changes talking on the phone and having phone trees and talking to 400 different people who don't communicate with, with each other just doesn't work for a modern society. And what's sad is with insurance, usually you're taking people at some of the worst times in their life when they have a sick baby or they were just diagnosed with cancer. And then you're making them have to have these difficult conversations with strangers and spending hours and hours a day on the phone rather than taking care of their illness. And it just adds extra stress and strain to what's, always, what's already a, a bad situation. So secondly, I think it's important that people advocate for themselves. One thing I find with insurance companies, they often just say no. First thing, when I call prescriptions into the pharmacy, sometimes your insurance company says, no, you can't have that medicine. You need to have this other medicine, even though a child has been on that medicine for, for years, or it's very appropriate for their condition. Sometimes just making a phone call, just reaching out to someone, uh, reaching out to us as physicians, this is part of what we do. We should be advocating for our patients and that's in the, in the office, but it's also you know on social media and it's also on the phone with insurance companies. And although this is the bane of my existence having to deal with this, it is part of my job right now. And until the system changes, I'm going to be the squeaky wheel and I'm going to hopefully try to advocate for my families and my patients as much as possible. If I'll speak to this Anthem executive that saved the day. I did. I spoke to him and actually to his credit, I'm going to meet with him this coming week because he wants to get feedback from me. And he's also going to meet with the family to get feedback about what broke down in this system and how they can make it better in the future. Okay. Well, hello. That's <laughs> no, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the goal. I'm hoping they follow through. Thanks for being aggressive and persistent. Thank you. Thank you. Frustration and persistence sometimes are very helpful.